everybody, Silver Picker here, and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now, today's video is going to be a great one, especially if you're into making money buying and selling coins. What we have here, as you can see, are four tubes of wheat cents that were part of a recent collection I bought. You can see that video right here. Searching through wheat cents are one of my favorite ways to make a little bit of extra cash when I want to buy a collection. I typically pay anywhere between one and a half cents to three cents per coin, and I can always at least double my money. Seriously, I can at least double my money. It's easy, given the fact that most buyers of wheat cents are willing to pay up to five cents or even more per coin. Now, doubling your money is great, but you need a heck of a lot of wheat cents in order to make that prospect actually exciting. However, the reason why buying wheat cents like these guys is actually a really exciting prospect for somebody that's trying to make money in the business of buying and selling coins is because your baseline, you're actually guaranteed to make at least double your money if you're paying one and a half or two cents per wheat cent. That is fantastic. Everything else beyond that, anything you find special above and beyond that, that's the gravy. That's the gravy on top. For a little lesson, a little primer, some of the coins that you can hope to find when searching for wheat cents include the 1943 steel cent. Those are worth between 10 and 20 cents a piece in circulated condition, considerably more in uncirculated condition. They're really cool, they're a really cool part of history, though they're not really worth that much, but you're actually making like five to 10 times your money on those coins as opposed to the regular wheat cents, so they're still great to look for. Also, anything in uncirculated condition is awesome. So if you find something that's shiny and red and really got the mint luster on it, that's a great, great coin to find. Always put those aside. The third thing you want to look for are 1909 VDB coins. These are 1909 coins from the first year of the series in which the designer's initials are found at the bottom of the reverse. The S mint mark is particularly valuable and that can fetch hundreds to even thousands of dollars depending on the condition. And by the way, those are findable. If you look right over here, I will point out a video in which I found a 1909 VDB penny in a lot of coins just like these that I purchased from a garage sale. The next thing you want to look for are key dates. Key dates such as the 1914D and the 1931S are pretty rare to find. That's why they're key dates. But if you do find them, they can really bring a pretty penny. Pretty penny. How'd you like that for a pun? In addition to the key dates, you want to look for varieties and errors such as the 1922 no D and of course the famous 1955 double die cent. And in addition to those, there are the super rare varieties and errors such as the 1943 bronze cent and the 1944 steel cent. These can fetch hundreds of thousands to maybe even millions of dollars in the future given that there are only a handful of each of these said to be in existence. These are just some of the more well-known coins that you can search for, but there are literally hundreds of other varieties that can make you tons of money if you find them. There are some people out there actually that make thousands of dollars every single year just by searching through boxes of Lincoln cents from the bank and bags of wheat cents they purchased on eBay. And they find rare varieties and errors. And if you want to learn more about how you can do that, you should pick up a copy of the Cherry Pickers Guidebook. They're available on Amazon and you can purchase them via my website through the Amazon link at thesilverpicker.com. And if you buy through my link, it will literally not cost you an extra cent. It will just help support the channel and help me out. In fact, if you click on any of my Amazon links and then do all of your regular Amazon shopping, no matter what you buy after you pressed on that Amazon link, it will support my channel and help me out a ton. Well, now that you know what's out there in the wide world of wheat sense, why don't we take a look at these babies and see what we got. All right, I'm pretty excited for this. I have not looked at this at all. Literally not opened these one bit. This is the first time that I'm seeing them, first time that you're seeing them. Let's see how these look. So what I like to do is I like to take a look and I sort them by the year. So if I see that there are nothing special, no special uh, mint marks, no special dates, no special errors, I like to just sort them by dates and that's how I keep them in my collection. So 1950s, 1940s, again 1950s. All right, let's speed this baby up. So that's a regular 1955, unfortunately not a 1955 double die. All right, not bad, we got one from the 1930s. 
getting older. Finding old ones are also worthwhile. Hello. That is a nice one. 1917. Like I said, finding in older coins, especially from the teens or earlier, is very, very good. Well, there's a 1981 Canadian cent. At least this Canadian cent has more copper in it than its American counterpart, but again, would not want to pay three cents for this. Well, that's a lesson to you guys. You should check out some of these things before you just assume and pay for them. All right, so that's the first roll. The first roll, we did okay. We got a bunch from the 1950s, a bunch from the 1940s, two losers, and two nice ones, 1935 and 1917. I'm not too upset about that. All right, All right let's make some room for the next tube. Ooh, that one already wanted to jump right out. Let's see what that is right off the bat. Eh, just the 1952D. All right. Let's see how we do on these guys. Maybe I'll keep it a little more organized this time. See, now I get into a groove, and it's a little easier. You just peel them off the top, check them out, nothing special. They go into the date pile. 40s. 50s. All right, another 1935. Not bad. Hey, that's not too shabby. Got ourselves our first steel scent. 1943 steel scent. It's in shabby shape. Probably won't fetch more than 10 to 20 cents in a lot. But hey, I'll put it in my, my collection of these. And someday I'll sell them as a lot of 100 or 1,000 of them and make a little bit of money. Not too bad. See, that's another thing you should focus on is, you know, maybe something that's 10 cents or 20 cents doesn't really tickle your fancy, but hey, 1934. But what you got to remember is that as you buy more collections, you're going to have lots of things like little things that you're, oh man, we're getting into the good stuff now, 1938. I'm never going to be able to finish this piece of advice. No, what I was saying is that as you get into this business more and you buy more and more collections, what will happen is you're going to get all sorts of coins that are not the focus of your purchase. Like when I buy stuff, the focus of my purchase is always the silver coins, the numismatic coins, the gold coins. But when I get the bulk weed sense and then I finally go through them with a fine tooth comb, like every now and again, I'll find one of these guys, you know, I'll find one of these steel scents. And on its own, it's not worth putting in the effort to sell, but I put it in a tube full of the other ones, or I put it in a bag full of the other ones, and eventually, you end up amassing a pretty big collection that you can sell in bulk for real money. I do the same thing with no-date buffalo nickels, uh, random date uh, Indian head pennies, and all sorts of other stuff, and also lots of foreign coins. Once you have them in bulk, you can really make some nice money and sort of puff up your, your profits. So keep that keep that in mind. So when you All right, I'm really liking the second tube. It's got a lot of coins from the 1930s in it so far. Wow, 1928. Really when you get down the 30s, like I'm excited about it just because it's older. The 1940s and 50s are super common, but they're still not that that amazing. But when you get down into the 20s and teens, you really do get some some nice premiums on those. You know, maybe not a ton, but like you sell them in a lot and you'll do all right on them. Right, that's a good one. 1924. I am getting much more happy with this with this uh, set of coins. Uh, at first, when I saw just like the 1950s and 40s, I was a little bit wary that this was going to be, you know, just kind of a, a bust of a video. But now I am seeing some nice stuff that I am liking. Nothing worth hundreds or thousands, but definitely the kind of stuff that I like to see when I'm buying a lot of these coins. Hello. 1918, 1918, not too shabby. All right, and that is roll number two. Roll number two destroyed roll number one. First of all, none of these uh, negative Nancys over here, none of these uh, wheat, you know, none of these non wheat scents, but also a bunch of coins from the 1930s, a steel scent, and a couple of coins from the 20s and teens. Really, really good. All right, let's go into the third tube. Let's see what we get from this guy. All right, 
35. All right, another 35. Nop, womp, womp, womp. Another Canadian scent. Sometimes when I see these facing this way, I think that it's a flying eagle scent before I realize that it's just a Canadian scent. Nothing special. That's a bummer. Nice, a 1928. Or is that a 26? 26, I think. Well, huh? do you see that? Do you see that? Take a look over there. All right, another steel scent. Not bad at all. This one's in better shape, too. Still not uncirculated or anything, but not a bad specimen. Man, tons of 1955s. You always get excited, hoping you've got that one in a million 1955 double die. And it never is. Someday, I'm holding out hope. All right, that was the third tube. And not quite as good as the second one, but still a little bit better than the first. This one, we only had one bummer coin. And we did get a nice shape 1943 steel scent. And we got a couple of coins from the 30s and the 20s. All right, let's take a look at what our last tube has in store for us. See if there's anything we can see from the edge. Maybe we can see. It looks like we don't have another steel scent in here. I guess we could have checked those on the other ones as well. There's a little gap here. It almost looks like there might be a dime in there. See that? I think there's a dime in there. Might be silver. Looks silver. Could also be a washer though. I've, I've had that happen too. All right, let's see how lucky we get. We'll save that little oddity for a little longer. Ooh, a 37 and a 38 right there, not bad. All right, who am I kidding? I'm rushing through this because I want to see what this thing is. All right, let's see. Let's see what that little washer of a coin is. All right, I'm really hoping for something good. Come on. Hey, holy cow, holy freaking moly. I swear to God this was not a plant. I swear to God, this is legit. This is not a this is not a freaking drill. I promise you. I know that I'm already gonna get a million comments because I get these on every video that it's phony, that it's fake. I promise you, this is not fake, this is not phony. This is a seated half dime. Wow! Wow, wow, wow. This seated half dime, let's see what year it is. What year is this? Okay, it looks like it's no date. It looks like you can't really make out the date. But I am not complaining about that. Man! Oh my god, look at that. All right, we're going to come back to this at the very end. Jeez. All right, who cares about this stuff? Okay, 1937. I would have been happy about that two seconds ago. Alright, a 1935S. S mint marks are typically a little bit rarer, so I'm pretty excited about this. And last but not least, what a way to end it on a 1938. Not bad at all. Alright, let's, let's clean this stuff up. Look at that. Look at that. This is what these four tubes of coins looks like after it's been sorted. We got 81 coins from the 1940s. We got 85 coins from the 1950s. We've got coins ranging from 1930 to 1939 over here, including a 1935S. We got two steel cents, not bad. And we've got five coins from the 1920s and teens, Really, really old, really, really nice. Unfortunately, of course, no key dates or anything like that. And we did get these three stinkers over here. We got this 1960s memorial scent and these two Canadian scents. But 
I'm not going to complain about any of this because of this guy right here. This is a true lucky day bonus. It happens so rarely. So rarely does this happen. But when it does, man, does it feel good. So in the irony of all ironies, where I'm trying to show you guys how to make money buying and selling wheat cents, I end up showing you how to make money buying and selling wheat cents when you get this lucky. So obviously I did really, really well on this set of wheat cents, but uh, when it comes to the actual wheat cents itself, I'm very happy because I hit my baseline, I doubled my money for sure, and then some, because I got a couple of nice little specimens, old stuff, steel stuff, you know how it is. Really, really happy with this haul, that is for sure. So I think I've said everything there is to say about this lot of coins. So that just about does it for this video. But I want to say thank you very, very much for watching and thank you so, so much to all of my subscribers. If you are not yet a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Join us in the Silver Picker Squad by hitting that subscribe button and that little bell next to it so you never miss an opportunity to learn about all the best strategies to succeed in the business of buying and selling precious metals and coins and to see incredible feats of luck just like this one right here. So I hope you all enjoyed the video because we got a lot more great stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned and until next time, Silver Picker out.